Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Unitarian Church of Edmonton. My name is Gordon Ritchie. My pronouns are he, him, and I have the pleasure of being your service leader this morning. Through the wonders of technology, we will be joined by our minister, Reverend Rosemary Morrison, who is currently in Whitehorse celebrating the birth of her new grandson. I know. We wish the family well. Uh, Mike, do we know indeed is Reverend Rosemary online with us? Yes. Oh, uh oh. <laughs> okay. So just in case uh, we were to have some technical difficulties, uh, Reverend Rosemary has pre-recorded her portions of the service this morning. And knowing that she is online means that uh, she will know if we are getting a wee bit rambunctious this morning, which I have a feeling that she won't mind. The title for our service this morning is Removing the Barriers to Love. Reverend Rosemary writes, being a Unitarian Universalist congregation is sometimes difficult. Our first task is to love, and there are so many times when we struggle with that concept. This service will offer tools, suggestions, and stories to help us remove the barriers to loving each other, and more importantly, to loving ourselves. It is good to have you with us here in the sanctuary and online. I know we have uh, announcements this morning, and Susan's going to start. Just another reminder on behalf of the board that after next week's service, there will be a congregational meeting that's hugely important. Basically, we're going to vote whether to ask Reverend Rosemary to be our ongoing uh, minister and uh, I can't actually I've been here 22 years I can't think of a vote more important for this congregation than making that decision and uh, people will be able to vote in the, here but also on zoom as well and um, yeah please come and uh, if you want more information about what we on the uh, ministerial transition team are doing. Uh, Lynn Turvey will be at the membership table uh, after church with copies of our latest report. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Susan. The Unitarian Church of Edmonton celebrates a rich mosaic of free thinking, spiritual questing individuals joined in common support and action. We welcome diversity, including diversity of beliefs from divine believers to humanists, from pagans to atheists and agnostics. We believe in the compassion of the human heart, the warmth of community, and the pursuit for justice and the search for meaning in our lives. If you're new with us this morning, welcome. There is some information out in the lobby. You're more than welcome to peruse. We invite you to stay for coffee and fellowship following the service. Chief Wilton Littlechild writes, As chief, I welcome you here to Treaty 6 territory. This land has been the traditional region for the homelands of the Métis people of Alberta, the Inuit, and ancestral territory of the Cree, Dene, Blackfoot, Soto, and Nakota Sioux people since time immemorial. The recognition of our history on this land is an act of reconciliation and we honor those who walk with us. As we begin our service, I would ask that you make sure that any electronic devices that you have are turned off during the service, thank you. And so, oh, wait, I need to go over here. We are reminded here of our highest aspirations and inspired to bring our gifts of love and service to the altar of humanity. May we know once again that we are not isolated beings, but are connected in mystery and miracle to the universe, to this community, and to each other. And so as we begin our service, Karen has an offering for us.
Thank you, Karen. Yes, our theme for the month of February has been love. Karen and I have been indulging ourselves with <laughs> all sorts of music that has been a real treat to play. Thank you. It's time to start to, s no, 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 we have our chalice lighting. I'm jumping ahead because I'm so excited. I'm gonna ask Robert to come forward, if he would, for our words for the chalice lighting. It's the names of love written by Reverend Scott Taylor. We light, <coughs> pardon me, we light this chalice in the names of love. The love of family that brings us into being, allows us to bloom, and then sends us on our way with courage, knowing we can return to matter, no matter what. The love of partnered hearts that teach us to trust and help us know that we are who we are does not end at the barrier of our own skin. The love of friends who help us feel seen and sing our song back to us when we cannot hear it with our ears alone. The love of community that bathes us in belonging and calls us to see the needs of others as our own. And the greatest love, the love that will not let us go, even in our fear, even in our failure, even when we are lonely or lost. Love invites us home. If we listen, it is doing so even today. Thank you, Robert. Now it's time to sing. Our opening song is number 188, which is found in our, our hard-covered hymn books, but also on the screen behind me. For those of you online, the text should be coming up on your screen. I invite you to stand as you are willing and able as we join in singing, Come, Come, Whoever We Are. And Karen, let's maybe do this three times. Thank you. I'd like to invite Oksana up. We have a time for all ages and a special treat in store for you. Good morning. You may have noticed on our opening screen there was this beautiful image of a, of a heart uh, and there's this beautiful piece of, of woven um, beauty kind of welcoming us to our topic today. Uh, I know that there are several members in our community who are interested in fiber arts. And fiber arts relates to this large group of tactile art that requires a lot of labor and is visually very beautiful. And I was fortunate to be able to take a fiber arts class when I was living out in Halifax and it was taught by the Japanese artist Toshiko Horiuchi McAdam. And in the 1990s, she was showing a large scale crochet artwork at an art gallery and it was strung from wall to wall, and it was just this beautiful woven piece of art. And then she saw two children start to climb up on her sculpture in the art gallery, <laughs> because to them it looked like a beautiful woven hammock. 
So she nervously watched as her suspended artwork twisted and stretched as kids climbed on, the to on top of it. But suddenly, an idea was born. Now, several dec dec decades later, this artist is known for her playscapes around the world, and they look at the traditional barriers in playgrounds as boundaries that can be stretched. So I'd like to see if we are able to take a peek at what this might look like. On the whiteboard in the back, I had invited people to identify some of the barriers we have faced in the community. And these barriers can include financial barriers, racism, mental and physical health challenges, and ageism and others. A barrier is something that is imposed by somebody else. So imagine a gray concrete traffic barrier, a barrier that forcibly attempts to limit the options of someone else. It's imposed on us by someone or something else. But boundaries, on the other hand, are malleable, and they're established by you. You get to set them, and you get to play with them. So imagine those children bouncing on and in this giant crocheted playground suspended above the ground. Just like those children playing in a new space, boundaries help us to define what we're comfortable with. Healthy boundaries are the limits that we place around our time, emotions, body, and mental health in order to stay resilient, solid, and content with who we are. You can set boundaries around a variety of, variety of things, your emotional energy, your time, your personal space, your sexuality, your morals, your ethics, your finances, and even the material possessions you own, and even ephemeral things like social media. And you can set boundaries with the variety of people around you, your family, your friends, your romantic relationships, your coworkers, and even your strangers. So whether it's in love or life, the next time you come across an obstacle, ask yourself whether it's a barrier, like a concrete, immovable barrier placed by someone else, or a boundary, like the woven playground that can be stretched and be malleable while still keeping us safe. Thank you, Oksana. I think we need one of those installations in Keeler Hall, just saying. Oh, yeah? yeah? <laughs> Invite everybody. All young people have gifts to share that make our future more vibrant. These words are taken from the iHuman website. This organization has been our charity of the month for February. Since 1997, iHuman Youth Society has engaged Edmonton's marginalized youth to foster positive personal development, well-being, and social change. They support youth impacted by the negative outcomes associated with poverty, intergenerational trauma, addiction, mental health, abuse, racism, discrimination, and exploitation. While they provide free access to their services and programs, they are not a drop-in center. Youth actively engage in determining their individualized journey through their resources and guide how they can support them. And so for the month, we have been supporting iHuman. All of the unidentified cash that is received is offered to iHuman. And for those of you who are online, I invite you to go to their website and make a donation. And so, let us receive our offering.
We thank you for your generosity of spirit and action through all we do here in this community and in the wider world. We are involved in the important spiritual work of creation and compassion. Let us join together in singing from you I receive. And now Reverend Rosemary has a treat for us. She has come across uh, Nemo, Empty Hands Music. We've already seen a video that he created earlier in our church here. And Ro Reverend Rosemary has found another one. It's called Keep Loving, A Universal Love of Song by Empty Hands Music. She actually contacted the creator of this piece and has very graciously and very lovingly granted us permission to view this this morning. Please enjoy. Whether you're different, same ignorant or intelligent Whether you tell the truth, lie or embellish it Whether you live in gratitude or for the hell of it It doesn't really matter, we're still one single fellowship Whether you've been lustful or living celibate Whether you're an optimist or only see the negative Whether you're dead, broke or rich from inheritance it Doesn't really matter, we're made of the same sediment Whether you got a family or single parenting Or you're Asian, African, European or American Whether you pray to God or atheist is irrelevant Cause what you got inside is the same as all your people in the homeless can you say everywhere you are is where your home is sharing your heart in the dark just like a lotus letting your light shine bright so you can flow here everlasting love of grace like those did jesus muhammad krishna buddha and moses who carry the weight of the world upon their shoulders so every time you fall down go ahead and hold this close to your heart because you're a love soldier and every time you get a chance you pay it forward moving closer to heaven's gates we're all soaring because of you love is where we're so headed towards
Well, thank you, Reverend Rosemary, for bringing that to us. Reverend Rosemary has asked me to give a brief personal reflection on the theme of this morning service. I'll begin by asking you a question. How many of you have ever encountered a barrier of some kind in your life? Okay, for those of you online, yeah, there's a few hands that have gone up. Oksana was making reference to a whiteboard in the back of the sanctuary. And at the end of the service, I invite you to take one of the markers and write in something that you have found has been a barrier in your personal life. I know some of the things that have been written down already are financial, homophobia, education, sexism, ability. For those of you online, I invite you to type in a particular barrier that you've experienced using the, the chat icon. Now here's another question for you. How many of you have ever found it difficult to ask for what you need to overcome your barrier? Yeah, we've still got hands coming up, and certainly mine, because I know I have. One of my favorite readings in the back of our hymn book is We Need One Another by George O'Dell. He refers to times in our lives when we are in need of one another. He writes that we need one another when we are in trouble or afraid, when we are in despair and need to be recalled to our best selves again, when we would accomplish some great purpose, when we mourn. All our lives, we are in need, and others are in need of us. Um, what was that last line? Others are in need of us? Hmm. Now, that's a line that I sometimes have trouble with, because sometimes I don't feel like I'm needed. For example, I could have not signed up to be the service leader this morning. I could have been replaced. I could have slept in, putzed around the house for a while, and possibly made blueberry pancakes. But then I thought about this place, the Unitarian Church of Edmonton, and how I need to be here. You see, I come to this place when I felt troubled and afraid, when I've been in despair, when I've experienced great loss, and I've come to this place, as George writes, in the hour of great success, when I look for someone to share my triumphs. And we come to this place to be with one another when, with encouragement, we might endure to stand again and when we mourn and would be comforted. Yes, we may have barriers that challenge us, and it may be true that all our lives we are in need, but I believe that it is also true that we need one another and others need us. And this is what love is. Blessed be. I'm going to turn things over to Reverend Rosemary. We have a meditation video that she has found for us. Hope you enjoy. Please join with me in the spirit of prayer, meditation, reflection, whatever word works well for you. I invite you to adopt that word. As we approach this time of meditation, I invite you to plant your feet on the ground or the bed or the couch or the floor, sinking into it, letting your body get ever heavier and heavier, releasing yourself to the pull of the gravity, 
holding us to the earth. Picture yourself lying flat on this earth as it pulls at your joints, at your limbs, at your head, at your forehead, inviting you to join with it. Allow yourself to be encompassed, enveloped by that which is holding you. I invite you to take a deep, long breath. Make it last as long as you can. And then at the end of that breath, notice that little pause and then release it again, letting it take a very long time. And once again, in. Pause and out. Once more. Did you notice any tension? Any little spots in your body that you need to wiggle out? If you did, I invite you to wiggle them out now. Maybe tilt your head from side to side. I invite you to breathe into any spots in your body that might be hurting you. Breathing in life giving air. At this time you could have your eyes closed or looking down. I invite you to have a soft gaze if they are open and to focus maybe on the candles at the chancel or a spot on the floor or out the window in your home gazing out onto a tree limb. I offer you this poem, Questions You Ask Yourself, by Zimborska. What do a smile and handshake hold? Do your greetings never keep you as far apart as other people sometimes are when passing judgment at first glance? Do you open each human fate like a book, seeking feelings not in fonts or formats? Are you sure you decipher people completely? You gave an evasive word in answering, a bright joke in place of openness. How do you tally your losses? Stunted friendships, frozen worlds. Do you know that friendship like love requires teamwork? Someone missed a step in this demanding effort. In your friend's errors, do you bear no blame? Someone complained advised. How many tears ran dry before you lent a hand? Jointly responsible for the happiness of millennia, don't you slight the single minute of a tear, a wince? Do you never overlook another's effort? A glass stood on the table, no one noticed until it fell, toppled by a thoughtless gesture. gesture. Are people really so simple as far as people go? And now a few moments of silence. What do a smile and a handshake hold? Do your greetings never keep you as far apart as other people sometimes are when passing judgment at first glance? Do you open each human fate like a book, seeking feelings not in fonts or formats? Are you sure you decipher people completely? You gave an evasive answer, a bright joke in place of openness. 
how do you tally your losses? Stunted friendships, frozen worlds. Do you know that friendship, like love, requires teamwork? Someone missed a step in this demanding effort. In your friends' errors, do you blame, bear no blame? Someone complained, advised. How many tears ran dry before you lent a hand? Jointly responsible for the happiness of millennia, don't you slight the single minute of a tear, a wince. Do you never overlook another's effort? A glass stood on the table, no one noticed until it fell, toppled by a thoughtless gesture. Are people really so simple as far as people go? How many tears ran dry before you lent a hand? Jointly responsible for the happiness of millennia, don't you slight the single minute of a tear a wince? Do you never overlook another's effort? A glass stood on the table no one noticed until it fell toppled by a thoughtless gesture. Are people really so simple as far as people go? Let us enter into a few moments of silence. Please remain seated as Gordon begins to play Spirit of Life. He'll play it through once. And then I invite you to sing it through three times using the words or just humming along, whatever feels right for you. Please remain seated. The words will appear on the screen.
spirit of life, come to me. Come to all of us here in this room. Come to all of us who are online. Come to all of us who are viewing this in the future. We are here as a beloved community to love, to support, to acknowledge that throughout our days and weeks, we have barriers, we have challenges, and we take time to acknowledge those by lighting candles. For those of you online, I invite you to write in your thoughts, your wishes, your prayers in the chat. For those of you here in the sanctuary, we have two candle stations. I would ask you to come forward and when you do light the candle light on this side of the table so you are facing the back. If you do have a candle that you'd like to light this morning, I invite you forward now. I'd like to ask Robert to come forward and light a couple more candles, if he would. The first is to acknowledge all the thoughts that we had the, the privilege of being able to read here in the sanctuary, and those comments were all written by those who were with us online. Know that we have actually read your thoughts. We thank you for sharing those with us, and know that you are with us. We send you love. I'm going to ask Robert to light a second candle as well. For those in our community, in our country, around the world, who are in need of our love and prayers, for those who have been dealing with natural disaster, those who are in 
the, in the times of war, those who've been displaced, those who need comfort, this is a candle for all those as well. May we keep all of these thoughts and prayers within our hearts and know that we are not alone. We are indeed part of a blessed community. Blessed be. And now back to Reverend Rosemary for her message for this morning. Good morning. My name is the Reverend Rosemary Morrison, and it is my pleasure to serve this congregation. I wish to extend my gratitude to everyone for being here this morning, either on Zoom or watching the recording later on or with us in the sanctuary. I also wish to thank everyone that participated in and contributed to this service. We need one another, and this week, I really needed help as I am coming to you remotely from Whitehorse, Yukon. I am so grateful to everyone who is holding down the fort and holding the space. The reading this morning is called Love Bombs, Five Truths to Remove Your Love Barriers for Good by Christy Peoples. And the article is from Meet Mindful a wellness online magazine. She says, there's a great teaching of Rumi, the 13th century Sufi poet that tells us if we want love, it's our job to remove any barriers to it. His exact language was pristine, perfectly worded and wise. Where my paraphrasing, not to mention my attempts to execute this principle, is clunky at best. Still, I refer to it often whenever I need an added reminder that love and connection without the encumbrance of conditions or strings is the ultimate journey for us all. Here's where I must add that some universal truths about love may languish in our overthinking if we're not careful. What we're going for, after all, is to realize love's presence in our actions and being. As such, it's easy and un often unconscious to sabotage ourselves by lining the path to love with stumbling blocks. What follows are a few re timeless reminders about love, along with tips to help you address any blocks you may have around it. Buddha. When Buddha said, love is a gift of one's innermost soul to another, so both can be whole. He wasn't just offering up a useless platitude for greeting card companies. He was inviting us to keep our hearts open to others, so we could experience the same in return. Despite any past wounds we've sustained in love, there's no way around the fact that if we ever expect to receive it again, we must also be willing to give it, even if it's through the tiniest crack of a closed heart. Let your love trickle out, gaining momentum in the world as it goes. Giving whatever love you're able to is the surest way to guarantee its flow back to you. Second, the love doctor. Leo Bascalia was a self-proclaimed love doctor who once said, love is always bestowed as a gift, freely, willingly, and without expectation. We don't love to be loved. We love to love. I sense a repeating theme here. The idea that love is to be given as a gift, freely. To open up your generous, loving nature, start by intending just that. Then perform anonymous acts of kindness for people you know, as well as strangers. The love doctor couldn't have left us with a better or more perfect prescription. The third love bomb is from Loretta Young. Love isn't something you find. Love is something that finds you. 
said Harlot, Hollywood starlet, Loretta Young. Honestly, she says, I tend to roll my eyes at people who tell me stuff like this. Hurt happens to us all, and if what Loretta says is true, it's up to us not to bar the door, but to welcome it when it comes calling. Fourth, Mother Teresa. Let us always meet each other with a smile, for the smile is the beginning of love. Who else but Mother Teresa could dole out such wisdom as this, known for telling would-be volunteers to go back home and spread love in their own hoods. She was a tireless advocate of performing small acts of loving kindness, often. She was a living example of love in action. Reluctance to live in service to love keeps it at bay. One way to work with this block is to realize your power to change the course of someone's day and possibly life by the simple exercise of compassion. More than performing random acts of kindness, understanding the power of love to heal will speed your own healing in the process. And the fifth and last love bomb is by Zora Neale Hurston. She once wrote, Love makes your soul crawl out from its hiding place. As a writer and anthropologist, she knew her subject, people, right down to the stories they told. One such story that keeps a barrier to love is we must hide our hearts to keep them from being hurt and that we dare not draw too much attention to ourselves lest we attract the attention of people who want to do us harm. The ways we block our own access to love are many. The tools we use to keep us safe from its uncertainties, staggering. More often than not, we work at cross purposes where love is concerned. We may say we want loving life partners we might even intend, pray, meditate, and vision it with a fierceness. But how readily do we meet life with loving energy and open arms? Even for the most willing among us to do the personal work required for deep connection and healthy relating, the fact remains that our blocks and blind spots are rarely apparent to us, which means even the work of doing the work demands we show up humbly to love, willing to listen, open to learning, and courageous enough to wholly receive what comes. Rumi and the rest of us, and pardon me, Rumi and the rest have reminded us this much. Now it's our turn to begin. And that's the end of that quote. The quote by Rumi Christie Peoples is referring to at the beginning of her piece is, your task is not to seek love, but merely to seek and find all the barriers within yourself that you have built against it. That is the quote that inspired this message. It's kind of like the great Mullah story. The Mullah is a fictional character from the ancient Near East he is often depicted with a large goofy hat riding backwards on his donkey, exclaiming, Where's my donkey? Where's my donkey? The mullah stories are designed to help us see things within ourselves that we might need to see. And by using humor, the message is quite palatable. Here's my favorite mullah story. One day, the mullah was talking to his friends about how lonely he was. And during that conversation, he decided he was going to go off in search of the perfect partner. He would love them with all his heart because the other person would be perfect. Or at least perfect for him. The townspeople came out to see the mullah off and wish him well. After a time, he came home and his friends asked him, 
Did you find the perfect person yet, Mala? Have you found the perfect partner? No, Mala shook his head. He did not find the perfect partner. His friends encouraged him to go out again. And again, the Mala was unsuccessful. After the third attempt, the Mala decided to give up. Why? asked all his friends. Did you still not find the perfect person? <sighs> the Mullah replied, Yes, I did find the absolute perfect person to be my partner. Unfortunately for me, they also were looking for the perfect person. What we learn from this story is that if we want to have loving relationships in our life, we must be open to being a loving person ourselves. And of course, we don't have to be perfect. In fact, I think being perfect might be a little boring. But what does being a loving, loving person even look like? How do we know we are putting up barriers to love? The Gottman Institute in Seattle, Washington has done data-based research on relationships with the goal of trying to discover what components will help create lasting and or satisfying relationships. It is fascinating and I believe we can look into this research for a clue to what a barrier to love might look like. They talk about bids. A bid is a t an attempt to engage someone. For example, a person could say, Hey, look at that bird out the window. Isn't it amazing? The other person could look in the same direction and comment, Oh, wow, it's a goldfinch. I didn't realize they were migrating already. It's so beautiful. This would be a successful bid. In essence, someone said, I would like to share something with you. The receiving person says, Thank you. I'm so glad you asked me to connect with you. The opposite would be something like, Look at that bird out the window. Isn't it amazing? And the receiving person says, Yeah, I'm in the middle of something. This response does not allow for connection. The Gottmans have a relationship lab that they put humans into and then they watch them. They say they can tell the quality of a relationship and if it will pan out in about five minutes based on what happens when a bid is made. Bids are made often, everywhere we go and with everyone we meet. We are asked to engage many, many times a day. And if we have and we have untold opportunities to connect with friends, families, acquaintances, and strangers. Can you think of a time recently in your life where you responded to a bid positively? Or maybe not so positively? Of course, we can't be perfect. And I love how we get to do so many do-overs. We get so many chances to connect. Have you ever heard of Rat Park? Rat Park was the name given to a lab experience, experiment, this time with rats, uh, trying to understand addiction. A rat in a bear cage had two water bottles, one with just water, and the other had water laced with heroin in it. The lab rat kept going over and over again to the heroin-laced water until it finally overdue overdosed and died. The conclusion drawn from this experiment was that heroin addiction is merely physical. Those conclusions led to the thinking that addicts needed more and more and would eventually kill themselves given unlimited access to their drug of choice. But in the 1970s, Bruce Alexander, a professor of psychology in Vancouver, noticed something odd about this experiment. The rat is put in the cage all alone. 
It has nothing to do but take the drugs. What would happen, he wondered, if we tried this differently? So Professor Alexander built Rat Park. It was a lush cage where the rats would have colored balls and the best rat food and tunnels to scamper down and plenty of friends. Everything a rat could want. What, Alexander wanted to know, will happen now? In Rat Park, all the rats obviously tried both water bottles because they didn't know what was in them. But what happened next was startling. The rats, with these good lives, didn't like the drugged water. They mostly shunned it, consuming less than a quarter of the drugs the isolated rats used. None of them died. While all the rats who were alone and unhappy became heavy users, none of the rats who had a happy environment did. He, ex he repeated the experiment many times and also noted that many of the addicts coming home from war-torn countries stopped using when they got back into connections with families and friends. He argues addiction is an adaptation. It's not you, it's your cage. The work of Gabor Maté, a doctor who works with addicts on the Lower East Side of Vancouver, concurs with the findings of Professor Alexander. People are more likely to stop using drugs when their situation changes and they find meaning and purpose in their life. This, is, this knowledge is a challenge to society's tightly held belief regarding addicts and addictive behavior. The conclusion is the opposite of addiction is not sobriety, it's connection. The opposite of addiction is not sobriety, it's connection. Let's go back and connect some of the dots. The Buddha said, Love is a gift of one's innermost soul to another so both can be whole. We have to allow ourselves to give and receive love, even if we have been hurt. Closing ourselves off in case we get hurt again is a barrier to love. The love doctor Leo, Leo Buscalia also suggested that love is a gift freely given. Loretta Young suggests that we need to be open to love when it comes calling. We got to keep our hearts wide open, as the Leah Morris song suggests. Our Coriolis Choir has sung that a couple of times. Mother Teresa says, Always meet each other with a smile, for the smile is the beginning of love. So, here's what we've got so far. Love is a gift freely given. We need to be open to love when it comes calling. And now, letting ourselves know we are friendly and nice by smiling. Sora Neil Hurston wrote, Love makes your soul crawl out from its hiding place. Parker Palmer, Parker Palmer often says, The soul is very shy and needs the perfect circumstance to relax and let itself be known. Our shy souls need us to remove the barriers to love in order to be seen and appreciated. We also need to know that when we make a bid, our friends, families, acquaintances, or partners will respond favorably to us, or most of the time. We don't like to be ignored. It shuts us down creating a barrier to love. The overarching theme, of course, is connection. Lack of connection is the ultimate barrier to love within ourselves and our communities. I heard someone say once, we don't need church, but we need community. And church is one place to get community. Even the rats in Rat Park needed community. And when they found it, they were able to self-regulate and lead healthier lives. Of course, not all of us have equal access to community. 
poverty, colonization, systemic racism, intergenerational trauma, and addiction all affect a person's ability to find and engage with community in a meaningful way. It is interesting to think about how a community like UCE can affect change to create opportunities for connection and love for ourselves and for those that are in need and whose barriers to love might be much greater than our own. There is good work to do. We are so lucky to have this thriving community to engage in, to nurture relationships, to make friends, and to find meaningful and fulfilling work. Our hearts are happy when we are in community and finding multiple ways to connect. I guess you could say we're building our very own rat park right here at UCE. May you and me and each of us look for and find the barriers to love and then work toward removing those barriers for our own good and the benefit of all our communities and our connections. So may it be. Amen. I'm going to get taken off the screen right away and the words to the closing hymn, Love Will Guide Us, will appear. I invite you to sing Love Will Guide Us. Please rise as you are willing and able. be seated. Well, thank you, Reverend Rosemary, for your message. And thank all of those who made this techno service the way it was and how beautifully it ran. I actually had the script and the text of Reverend Rosemary and thank the gods that, yes, I didn't have to read it. <laughs> so thanks for all of those. Our tech team, Rosemary, for preparing her text and doing the videos before she left to go up north for Karen, for playing, all of our volunteers. We can't do this without any of you, so thank you, my heartfelt thanks. I'm gonna ask Robert to come forward to read our text as we extinguish our chalice this morning. From Whatever Arises, Love That, <clears throat> by Matt, Matt Kahn. In every breath you take, love is always here. Throughout any personal encounter, love is always here. No matter what comes together or whatever is pulled apart, love is always here. In your greatest moment of achievement, or even in your darkest hour of uncertainty, love is always here. Whether in the aftermath of tragedy or in the presence of your highest triumph, love is always here. 
When life is flowing, inspired, and harmonious, and even if it's frustrating, annoying, painful, or inconvenient, love is always here. When you feel alone or unsupported, love is always here. No matter what you understand, and despite what you have yet to figure out, love is always here. Despite your thoughts, regardless of what you choose or how you feel, love is always here. No matter what has been done to you or whatever you believe you've done to others, love is always here. Thank you, Robert. Reverend Rosemary has a benediction for us. And now I offer you these words of benediction by Jane Malden. <clears throat> now, may the love of truth guide you, the warmth of love hold you, and the spirit of peace bless you, this day and in the days to come. Amen. Go in peace, gentle people. Go in peace. Thank you all so much for being with us this morning, those here in the sanctuary and those online. It is our tradition to rise as we are willing and able and sing our closing song, Carry the Flame of Peace and Love, until we meet again.